Welcome to our session today, Tips for Assessing Student Learning Using Blackboard. This is one of the um, online sessions we offer in a, a Blackboard Tips series where we really just try to uh, share a lot of best practices and, and tips that, that we've collected uh, from faculty um, and those that have taught with Blackboard TAs and the teaching staff um, and try to pass along those tips. So today is really uh, designed, this session is designed to be uh, not only an opportunity for me to share with you some tips and things that I've uh, collected and learned from faculty and working with faculty now over a decade here at NIU in teaching with Blackboard, uh, but also an opportunity for those of you that are joining us live today to um, certainly chime in with your tips. And uh, so we're really glad to have you here, whether you are participating live or if you are viewing the archive of today's workshop. Uh, my name is Jason Rohde, and I am the director of our Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center here at NIU, and I have my contact info here on the slide. I'll provide it again at the end of the session today. And if you'd like to go deeper on any of these uh, concepts that we talk about today, I'm happy to uh, follow up and, and have some follow-up conversations offline um, as, we, uh, as our time here today is uh, limited. So our agenda as we go through um, our online workshop here um, today is really to uh, kind of start off with a few preliminary thoughts, some things to keep in mind as we think about assessing student learning. And obviously our, our workshop here today is about assessing student learning using Blackboard. Um, but just assessment in general, we'll, we'll, we'll just throw out a few foundational concepts here for us to just keep in mind. Um, and then go from there through offering a few general assessment tips, but then specifically talk about some of the key uh, assessment tools in Blackboard. So for example, we'll talk about um, surveys and quizzes in Blackboard. We'll talk about assessing discussions in Blackboard, as well as using safe assignments, which is a plagiarism prevention tool that we have um, here uh, within our Blackboard instance at NIU. So we'll, we'll talk about all of these, and I'm going to try to provide with for each one of these some very practical um, suggestions, some tips, um, things that you may want to keep in mind. Um, the tips that I share today, I have kind of collected into an online handout, which I will provide you the link to um, at the end of the session here today. So uh, you don't necessarily have to feel as though you have to jot all of these down. Uh, we do have them available uh, in a single kind of web page format for you, and I'll, I'll give you that link here at the end of the session today. Um, I, if we have time, we'll, we can certainly open it up for uh, Q&A. Uh, but I, I do want to encourage you as we go through our session, especially those of you participating live, share your tips. As we go through, if something I share resonates with you or if you have other suggestions, uh, by all means, please use the text chat. Or uh, if you want to come on board, uh, you can raise your hand. So uh, with that, we will uh, move into our uh, presentation here. And, and just a few questions for you to consider as we get started. And I'm not asking for you to, uh, you know, verbally or even in the text chat respond to these questions. But these are just some initial questions uh, that I want to, uh, for us to think about and for you to think about introspectively uh, as you think about your course and the assessments that you're already doing with your students. So first of all, what are the objectives for your course? Um, I, I hope that each of your courses you have very clear uh, learning objectives. And, and it, they're not uh, simply goals. We, we have, uh, we often in, in our workshops, we talk about goals versus objectives. And, and objectives are really these measurable outcomes that we have for our students. Um, and so you, know, you may need to even revisit the objectives for your course. I think that's um, when you're teaching, that's where, you, where we always should start, right? So um, I'd want to throw that out there and, and pose the question, how are you currently measuring whether or not students are meeting your objectives? So as you think about the courses that you teach and the objectives that you have for your various courses, um, how are you measuring the performance and the mastery of your students um, for those objectives? Um, I, I myself, I'm going to be teaching a, a new course um, uh, for the Department of Educational Technology Research and Assessment this summer. And the very first thing I'm doing right now is looking at the objectives for the course. And I'm thinking about, uh, as I'm going to be teaching this course, how I'm going to measure that. And, and, and um, this third question, you know, what instructional methods or, or materials 
are you currently using to help facilitate the learning process? So what are you doing to kind of move the students through that learning journey, if you will, toward being able to demonstrate mastery of those uh, learning objectives? So these are just some questions for you know, us to ponder here. And as we start thinking about uh, the technology tools, before we get to that point of, of looking specifically at those tips of using online technology like Blackboard, um, you know, questions like what are the active processes that you have students engaging in during your course? What are you having them do so that they're interacting with the concepts they're actively having to grapple with and, and maybe perhaps apply or analyze those concepts? Um, also, what types of assessments are you currently using? So as you think about the assessments um, for your students, uh, what's working really well for you uh, right now? And then what is the purpose of those assessments? Are they fostering the learning process or are they, are they simply a formality? And I ask this because I think it's easy, I know it's easy for me to uh, fall into uh, using assessment means and practices that, that I'm comfortable with and that I've used and or I had to uh, use as a student. And so um, some of the emerging um, technologies that we have make it possible to try some, some really interesting and engaging new ways of, of assessing student learning. And um, so I think it's helpful that we reconsider what tools we are using and then why are we using uh, specific processes um, for learning and assessing the learning. And, and how do you define learning? What is, what is learning for you? Um, is merely regurgitation true learning? Um, I suspect we would all say no, it's not. Um, you know, there are times where students need those foundational concepts, whether it's vocabulary or, or very basic uh, you know, foundational uh, knowledge points. But moving beyond that, I think that's where we want to get our students to, is that place where they are truly being able to um, synthesize, analyze, think critically, um, and I think the assessments that we pick can really be key in helping um, scaffold a process and uh, opportunities for students to show that level of learning. So for me, uh, three attainable goals that I, I strive for and I would encourage all of us to strive for in our teaching would be, and I use the acronym CAR, um, but just to think about critical thinking, application, and reflection. Those are the three goals that whatever course I teach, these are things that I really strive for is to, to make sure that this is happening in my course, that there is a, a measure of critical thinking that students are applying these concepts in the real world settings where they can go out and they can, uh, they'll be able to apply those in the marketplace um, you know, once they graduate, as well as giving them opportunities to reflect upon that learning process, to solidify the, uh, the learning that's taking place. I think reflection is a really key piece um, in that. So the bottom line when we talk about assessment is that student learning outcomes should drive assessment, not the available technology. And we're going to spend the rest of uh, the session here today really diving in and looking at the technology and different tools and, and tips for using the different technology tools. But I, I do want to make sure that I'm clear the importance of, of being purposeful and having those outcomes really drive the assessment process. Uh, for our students. So are there any questions at this point um, before we, we jump in and we look some more at the, the technology? If you don't have any questions, give me um, a smiley face. So where you, where you do that is you click on the, the little uh, smile emoticon and you'll find a, a smiley face icon there. So um, there we go, just to give you a chance to try out another one of those uh, uh, tools here within Blackboard Collaborate. So very good. Well, we're going to jump in and uh, talk specifically, you know, initially just at a few uh, tips in general when it comes to online assessment. Now, assessing students online you know, is a bit different than the traditional in-classroom, face-to-face types of assessments. And so these are some general principles um, that I often share with faculty uh, that I found from my own experience as well as working from, with other faculty that, that I would pass along. And, and as, again, as I'm going through and sharing some of these, by all means, if you have other tips, please feel free. Please use the text chat and you can enter yours there as well. Um, but the first I would say when, you, when you're thinking about assessing online is to avoid high stakes objective assessments online. Uh, when you have 
uh, whether it's an online test or, or some type of a quiz, you know, midterms, that type of thing. When you're in a physical classroom, you can control that environment. You're the, the proctor, if you will, the individual there that, that can kind of control what's happening in that situation. But as soon as you move those assessments online, you really can't guarantee that students aren't going to be sitting there with the textbook or with a friend helping them um, you know, go through and complete those assessments. So um, when you think about online assessments, we start looking at more uh, what we would call authentic types of assessments, where uh, perhaps you have a mix of some objective types of, uh, of uh, the questions, but then a subjective piece, where uh, maybe it's a writing piece, it's a, a project-based kind of an assessment, where you're having them demonstrate um, that they're able to pull together um, some concepts. And uh, great, Ray, thank you for the question about now about rubrics and measuring learning online. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up. I am going to talk about rubrics uh, in a little bit, Ray. So uh, that's perfect uh, reminder. Thanks for for putting that in the text chat. Um, and uh, so anyway, so avoid objective high stakes assessments online. There, you certainly can do uh, midterm and final exam types of assessments online, but when you do those, they need to be uh, avoid that objective, just true, false, multiple choice kind of of a, of a quiz or a test. There are other ways and that you can go about assessing that, that knowledge. I will give you some tips when it comes to specifically if you want to have an online quiz, some things you can do to help avoid uh, the temptation for students to, to cheat uh, and, and to um, so anyway, we'll talk some more about that. Um, another tip would be to have students complete practice versions of uh, the required online assessment to become familiar with the technology. So for example, maybe your online assessment is students giving an online presentation using this Blackboard Collaborate technology that we're using here today for this workshop. Um, before you have them you know, actually and I've actually done this in online courses I've taught that have been fully online where we, we actually, the students presented using this technology. Well, I wanted to make sure that they were comfortable using it before I required them to, to use it for a grade. And so to build in opportunities for them to practice using the technology I think is really key. Um, also to um, think about as you are um, setting up your assessments uh, in Blackboard, which is the, the tool that we have here at NIU for, for doing online assessments. Um, as you're setting those up, one of the, the, the options you have often is you need to put a link to that assessment somewhere. And something I always recommend, and I've learned this from experience working with, with students, is to uh, keep things simple by putting the link for that assessment in the same folder as the, the unit or module content. So however you are uh, structuring your course, have a, have a single place where the students go where if you're posting content for them, uh, readings or videos or things that they're going to be viewing, also put the links to the assessments right there as well. So they're not having to kind of search through your course to try to find where to go to submit those assessments. Um, also, look at uh, reusing and repurposing um, assessment types once you have those configured in Blackboard. And by, by this I mean uh, think about the, the kinds of, of activities that you want them to do. And if, if you're going to have them uh, do a similar type of, of activity multiple times, you may want to use that same tool, um, have them use, reuse that same tool multiple times in the course. So for example, if you were going to have them discuss, uh, you're going to have that be graded. Well, once you set up that graded discussion in Blackboard, um, you can use those same configuration settings and copy that discussion board um, to create successive discussions. So if you're going to have multiple uh, graded discussions, per se, um, you don't have to set those up from scratch every time. You can set up one, you can then copy that one, and then just change the description and, and so forth. So uh, in that sense, you have a a consistent structure and, and consistent setup for the students. Also, as you're uh, assessing student learning and, and looking to do that, really a key, and, and countless studies have shown the importance of that uh, faculty feedback to the students, and that students are really looking for that. Um, studies in terms of, of retention and uh, student satisfaction and engagement and, and learning in general all point to the value of that faculty 
uh, feedback. That's what we call formative feedback throughout the learning process. So not just waiting until the end of the course to give them you know, that final feedback, if you will, on the, the last big ass assignment in the course, but throughout the course, at, at various junctures, when they are submitting um, you know, activities or assessments, you're having them complete these assessments to give them feedback along the way. Um, that's really key, and using the tools that you have in Blackboard, you can, uh, it's very easy to be able to provide that level of feedback and talking about rubrics and, and the new inline grading features that we have for um, submitted assignments, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, all are really key in helping uh, make it very easy uh, to provide that meaningful feedback. And remember, there is no guaranteed approach to prevent cheating online. So as we, there are some principles that we'll talk about um, in terms of, of preventing cheating, and, and those of you that want to talk more about that, we even have uh, some follow-up resources I can send your way. Uh, but again, there's no guaranteed approach, especially with the prevalence of, of the technology that students have available nowadays. Uh, you know, things as simple as taking photos of, you know, snapping photos with their phone of the computer screen and texting that to a friend. I mean, there's lots of things students can do to be creative in finding ways to, you know, subvert the system, if you will. So that's where, we're, where we really come back to thinking about the assessments you're doing in general, the, the authentic types of assessments um, that we're, you know, putting in place um, for our courses. So let's jump in now and talk specifically about uh, some of these tools in Blackboard. And this is where we're going to give you some very concrete uh, tips for using each of these kinds of assessment tools in Blackboard. And for all of these, uh, we could go into much more detail, and, and actually for each one of these technologies, we do a, you know, a, an hour to hour and a half workshop just on each one of these tools because there's, there's a lot that goes into to really designing them well and thinking about them. Um, we have a lot of resources on, online, which I'll be pointing to you as well. So for any of these tools that we look at, uh, if you want to go deeper, uh, by all means, um, certainly reach out to me, let me know, I'd be happy to, to put you in touch with more resources um, that, can, that can go even in, in greater depth than we are able to do today. Um, so we'll, let's start off with talking about surveys. Now, a survey um, in Blackboard, it's located within, uh, when you launch Blackboard and you're in a course that you're teaching, you go to Course Tools, you, know, you click on the Course Tools uh, button here under Course Management, and then down here, down below, um, you'll see an area that says tests, surveys, and pools. And Blackboard pools, all three of those um, kind of pulls them together under one umbrella heading of test, surveys, and pools because they're all in essence used uh, in similar ways. Um, surveys are uh, anonymous by default in Blackboard. So meaning you can, uh, you can have students complete a survey, you can see that they completed it, and you can even give them uh, you know, points, participation points, if you will, for doing so. But you can't identify uh, how one student responded to that survey versus another. Um, they are, you see that aggregate summary, you don't see an individual um, you know, response. You also, with surveys, there, there are no right or wrong answers. Uh, you know, a survey is really a means of, of collecting feedback in, in, in a summary kind of fashion. Um, so as you set up survey questions, there's no option to put in a, a correct or incorrect answer because of the nature of, of how they're used. So as you're using uh, and you're thinking about the survey tool, um, if you need to gather aggregate responses from students, um, I recommend that you use the survey tool. Um, so maybe at the beginning of your course, you want to do a, a pre-course survey, get a, a snapshot, a pulse of where your students are at, uh, whether it's in terms of uh, some of the, the concepts that you're going to be covering, or maybe it's, maybe it's even their uh, familiarity with the technology in general. You want to have a, some kind of a pre-course survey, or, or maybe midway through the course. Something that I, I try to do in my teaching is partway through the course to have a kind of a mid-course feedback survey, an opportunity for the students to anonymously give me some feedback on how's the course going. Um, or if I introduce a new, uh, a new kind of an assessment or a, uh, some new aspect of the course, and maybe I want to get some quick feedback from the students before getting to that end of course evaluation, um, the survey is really great for doing that. You can create them very quickly, uh, you can deploy them, and then if you want to give students even credit for participating, you can do that. 
Um, when you're doing surveys, I always remind students that they're are, they are anonymous, so the students feel free to participate. Um, so, so certainly, just remind them of that, that their feedback is anonymous completing your survey. And if you have more than five questions in a survey, it's a good idea then to display the questions one at a time. Uh, so what I mean by that, and that's kind of just a general best practice, whether it's using the Blackboard survey tool or, or any online survey tool. But uh, the more that you kind of overwhelm the students with on a screen, uh, the less likely they may be to, to not finish. And for an instance where a student may be on a slower internet connection or uh, back in the days when we had dial-up internet, this isn't as much of a, an issue anymore, but uh, sometimes your internet would cut out while you were in the middle of doing one of these surveys. And so if the questions display one at a time, as the student uh, goes to the next question, the system is automatically refreshing and, and saving those responses as, as they go. So if for some reason the student were to get kicked out or uh, of the, the session online or maybe something crashes on their computer, um, you know, they wouldn't be, uh, you know, there's, those responses all wouldn't be lost. They would have been saved along the way. And uh, if you desire to share results with your students, you, you may want to, uh, after the survey is, is completed, uh, you can copy and paste the results into Word and then post that Word document in Blackboard. So to give you a, a real practical example, um, I did a pre-course survey uh, for an online course I taught this past fall um, for the Department of Educational Technology Research and Assessment. And it was a tech, a tech survey because I wanted to get a sense of uh, these in-service teachers' tech skills prior to getting into this tech course. Um, so I had them complete the survey. And then afterwards, I wanted them to be able to see kind of that, that summary of where is the class at in general. And so I took the uh, res results. When you view them in Blackboard, you can copy and paste them into a Word document and put that Word document um, in Blackboard. So that's a, those are a few tips about surveys. Now, I'm just curious to see if anyone has any additional tips uh, for using surveys in, in Blackboard. Um, so feel free to, to use the text chat. I'm just going to scan through, and I, I don't see anything in there yet. Um, but you can enter those tips in the text chat um, as I continue on. As you're thinking about maybe you've used a survey in your course and you have some other tips, um, certainly please go, feel free to go ahead and, and enter those in the text chat. Uh, or if you'd like to come on the mic, um, you can uh, raise your hand. So uh, is there a preference for uh, guest speakers, Ray, is your, your question? Uh, no, not a preference. Um, in terms of uh, not quite sure what you're asking there as a survey question. OK. Um, no, I, you know, I, haven't, I haven't run into, um, you know, if you have a guest speaker in your course and you wanted to have a, a survey, uh, you certainly could have that set up within your Blackboard course and the students could complete that and you could then, you'd have that summary data and you could copy and paste it into a Word document if you needed to share it with that guest speaker. Uh, maybe, you know, give it to them after the fact. You could, you could certainly do that. Um, or if it's just for you to kind of get a sense of the overall sense of the students and how that, that went, the, uh, the survey tool is a great tool for that. So uh, great question there. Anytime you want to gather that, that, that anonymous, I think the key is that it's anonymous um, data from students. The survey tool is great for that. If you want them to maybe have a conversation back and forth about, you know, the guest speaker, then maybe you would use a discussion board instead of the, the survey tool. So I uh, hope that answered your question, Ray. Uh, so let's move on. And, and again, if you have other questions or comments, put them in the text chat. Uh, but now let's talk a little bit about tests and quizzes. Now, remember that in Blackboard, they are all kind of clumped together in this heading, test surveys and pools. Uh, the reason being the mechanics of how a test, and that's really what Blackboard calls these things. It calls them tests. Uh, but it could be a quiz, any type of automatically graded uh, type of an assessment, Blackboard calls that uh, calls that a, a test. And the distinction between a test and a survey in Blackboard is that a test does have a right or wrong answer. Uh, so you do uh, note that when you set up a test in Blackboard. It does also, uh, you know, obviously uh, keep track of each individual student's responses. So you can get in and you can see how one student did over the other and 
by design, you would need to be able to do that when deploying a test. So those are the two key uh, distinctives between a test and a survey. But other than that, the mechanics of how you set up a test and how you use that tool in Blackboard is, is very similar. Now there is something else called a pool, and that's down here. And I'm going to talk a little more about pools here when I get into the tips, because pools are really powerful, where you can have a, a, a pool or a collection of questions. Um, and then you can build a test that will randomly pull questions from a pool. And where this really gets powerful is, let's say you have a, a quiz or a test over the first three chapters of a textbook. And maybe you have a pool of questions for chapter one, a pool of questions for chapter two, and another pool of questions for chapter three. Um, these can be questions either that you uh, have written and you put into Blackboard, or many textbook publishers now provide uh, pools of questions that are electronically formatted already for Blackboard that you can just import into your course. Well, in your course then, you can set up a test or a quiz that will randomly pick, let's say, five questions from Chapter 1, the Chapter 1 pool, five questions from Chapter 2 pool, five questions from Chapter 3, and mix them up. And in that sense, each student, when they take their, when it's their turn to take the quiz, they're getting different questions uh, from the rest of the students in the class. And what you can also do with pools is you can add questions to them over time. So as you teach that course, maybe you know, in successive offerings, maybe you add new questions every time. And so those pools can, can uh, you know, dynamically grow over time. Um, so it's, that's really powerful. Uh, great question posted here. Uh, is there an option for auto grading for objective type questions, or does the instructor have to read and manually give the scores? Great question, and absolutely for an objective test, a true, false, multiple choice, short answer, uh, or fill in the blank kind of question, something where you can specify what the answer is, Blackboard will automatically uh, grade those for you. Um, so if you had a, a quiz or a test that was all multiple choice, true, false, they would be automatically completely graded. Now what, what often faculty do, however, though, is they'll mix some of those objective questions with some subjective questions, you know, the, the short answer, uh, essay type of, of question. And what Blackboard will do is it will automatically grade the questions that are those objective types, you know, matching or, or multiple choice and leave the questions for you to manually grade that are those essay or short answer kinds of, of, uh, of questions. Now when it comes to actually building out your quizzes, there's a really great utility that uh, we recommend and I've used for years put out by the College of Southern Idaho called the Blackboard Quiz Generator. Now there, it is possible to, uh, to format either a Word file or a Microsoft Excel file have your questions, and then to upload those, those into Blackboard. But it's, it's rather tedious, um, and there's some, some special formatting you have to do. And the College of Southern Idaho developed this very simple web-based tool, uh, this Blackboard quiz generator. And you can go to their, their website um, that's here on the slide. Um, and also, once you get there, uh, they have some documentation, that, a link you can click on. And they basically give you a, a format to where in a Word file, and, and many of us have quizzes or quiz content that's already in a, a Microsoft Word or Word processor format. You can get that, those questions. You can simply format them in a Microsoft Word document. And then you paste them right into uh, the body here of this utility. You click this Create Quiz button, and it packages up your questions into a Blackboard formatted zip file that you can then import into your Blackboard course. Um, so if you, if you have a lot of uh, existing questions that you want to get into Blackboard, that quiz generator is a wonderful tool. Um, and I do that. So I format questions using Microsoft Word, and then I import using that, that quiz generator. Um, I also, I've talked about this already, but the uh, use of, of question pools and how you can reuse questions um, very easily. Um, I would recommend that you check with your textbook publisher to see if they offer question pools for your textbook. I already mentioned that, that many publishers do have Blackboard formatted question pools available, and uh, you may want to, to check that out. Um, 
Um, the question is there one column for questions and another one for answers in the quiz generator? It's it's a little um, it's not columns, Ray. It's actually a um, basically the the format is you you have like put a queue for question and a period and then you the name of your question and then and then you simply hit return and underneath uh, you enter whether it's uh, you know what the possible options are. You know maybe it's four maybe it's a multiple choice question so you would have an A a B a C and a D with whatever the the you want listed as that option, and then you put a little asterisk, a little uh, star in front of the one that's correct. So it's a real simple kind of formatting that you then, once that it's in that format, you can upload it um, using that generator. Um, so uh, and another uh, tip I would share is to, uh, whenever you can, create tests from random blocks of questions and pools. It, it really gives you many options. Uh, in terms of dynamically changing those tests over time. Now, when you set up a test in Blackboard, you want to pay attention to the test options when you deploy it. So, you have some options um, like how long do they have to take it, and, and there are a lot of different parameters there, which I, I don't have time to get into today. That's one of those things we spend a whole workshop talking about. But as you look at those, pay attention to those options. And you may want to look at randomizing the questions. So even if you don't use a pool, uh, maybe you just have the same 10 questions that all the students are going to be asked, you can still randomize those. So at the very least, they're getting them in a different order. Um, and coming in May, so I'm really excited about um, something to announce here, is there's some brand new features coming to Blackboard that we will have here at NIU called Test Availability Exceptions. And what this is going to allow you to do is for a test, any kind of a test or quiz, you can provide accommodations for individual students. So you may have one student that needs a special accommodation and needs extra time, for example, to complete that quiz. You'll be able to specify for that one student the amount of time that they get, and it'll override the default settings that you set up for that, that test. So before there was a, you know, prior to these new features coming, um, you would have to just have that student take more time, for example, and then you'd have to go in and manually adjust their score. And so, Amanda, it is really cool. Um, you'll be able to have just a single exam, and for those students that have uh, your ADA students, you can just give them uh, a test availability exception and set up what that is, how mu much extra time or whatever, and they'll be able to have that. So. Uh, there's a couple of other new features coming that I'm going to at the end here point you to a resource that you may want to take a look at to take a peek at what some of these other uh, really exciting additional features are. Um, so if those of you, as uh, I'm going to keep moving here for the interest of time, but if you have other questions or tips um, about tests, certainly feel free to you put those in the, the text chat here today. I want to talk a little bit now about discussions. So if you are having students discuss online, and especially as we move more toward uh, courses that are more hybrid or fully online, discussion is often a common assessment technique, um, having students discuss online. Um, and, and, and so you can assess those discussions uh, in Blackboard. Blackboard has built-in tools to make it easy for you to assess those. Uh, Doug, you asked the question, what format are the student answers generated when they're completing the test? Uh, created with the test quiz generator? Well, Doug, that's a great question. Um, all the students, they still complete the, the test in Blackboard. All that the, the quiz generator does is it's a utility for you to format a large number of questions and to easily put them into Blackboard. So by default in Blackboard, you have to manually kind of one by one enter questions into a quiz. And what the quiz generator lets you do is take a and maybe you've got 20 questions or 50 or 100 or more uh, questions, you can format them in a simple Word document, uh, you know, a simple interface, and then you just upload them all at once. So it's really a time saving for you. Um, the students, they're still going to complete, you know, they're not going to know any difference because they will complete the quiz online through Blackboard. So I hope that, that answered your question. Um, thank you for, for asking that. Um, so as you're thinking about discussions and assessing discussions, uh, first of all, pro provide clear expectations. So and this goes really for <laughs> any kind of assessment that you're going to do online. But provide clear expectations for the students for how they're going to be assessed and what those expectations are. Blackboard has a discussion grader tool 
that lets you grade a discussion. And I recommend that you grade by forum or by, by topic area, not by thread. So if we, if we go back to the discussion board for a second. So, so here's an example of a unit one discussion. This is a forum where the students are, are you know, posting and, and having discussions. You can set up that forum so that you can grade everything for that forum for that student. And you give them a point value um, you know, that, that represents their participation for that particular um, you know, unit for that, that discussion. And something I highly recommend is that use a rubric for grading discussions. And what a rubric does is it lets you add comments along with rubric scores. So it's really that, uh, that opportunity for you to uh, provide them some, some helpful feedback along the way. So as you're setting up a discussion board, uh, and I want to point this out where you can, can see this, is there's an option under forum settings to grade the discussion board. There's a, this grade heading down here. And, and you'll, you'll see that there are some options here. And what you want to select is the grade discussion forum option. And then you can put in the points that you want to make that discussion worth. Now, where, uh, what really becomes powerful is when you, you couple the grading uh, feature here with the attachment of a rubric. So um, Ray, you had asked about rubrics and, and how those can be used. Um, and I, I did recently an online workshop just on interactive rubrics um, that I'll, I'll, I can send out in my follow-up email. I'll include that. And it has more details specifically on the nuts and bolts of using rubrics. Uh, and I'll definitely send that, Ray. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the gist of, of how the rubrics work is you attach them to, whether it's a discussion or any kind of an assessment, and you put in the criteria and the levels of performance and, and what scores will equate to what. And then you're able to grade using that, uh, that rubric. So you can attach that to your discussion board. And then when you go to grade a discussion forum, the way it works in Blackboard after you've set it up is you'll go into the discussion forum, and there will be this grade forum button that you'll see. And only you as the faculty member uh, will see that. You can click on that, that button. And what Blackboard does at that point is it collects for you all of the posts for this, that, that, um, that one student, for the first student in your class list, um, in this left column. And then on the right column, um, if, if you picked to grade with a rubric, you will see uh, the rubric listed. And it's what we call an interactive rubric. So you'll notice that there are these radio buttons here. And I know it's hard to see on this, this screenshot. But there are, these are, it's an interactive rubric in the sense that you just click for each of the levels of performance that you specified. You know, did they have an exemplary? Was this exemplary? Um, and so forth. And you can even put feedback for that particular criteria of your grading. So it, it really helps you be consistent in your grading and also uh, gives you great tools for providing uh, consistent uh, and helpful feedback for your students. Um, so akin to discussions, we have things called assignments. Now an assignment in Blackboard is a tool that's used anytime you want to collect uh, some work electronically. So it's, it's not just a, some responses to questions, but more, uh, you know, these could be uh, papers uh, or could be projects. Anything that you want the students to turn into you, um, you can use the assignment tool for that. And that's located by within whatever content area you're, you're deploying these to, wherever you're, you're putting the links for the students. There's a Create Assessment tab, and then the, um, the assignment types are listed there. There's the assignment type right there. Now, assignments, I highly recommend the assignment tool for a variety of reasons. Uh, you know, if you've ever been collecting assignments from students through email, you definitely will want to move to the assignment tool because it collects them all electronically in Blackboard. Blackboard organizes them for you, keeps them there, time and date stamps them so you know when things were turned in. Uh, if you want to prevent late work, you can do that. There's just a lot of benefits to having the assignment manager in Blackboard collect those assignments for you. Um, when you're setting up the assignments, I recommend that you attach some instructions for this, the students. You could choose to attach maybe a, a template file, uh, maybe a, a Word document that you want to have them uh, kind of work through. And uh, Ray, if you've had technical problems finding and retrieving those, definitely follow up with us. We would be happy to, to take a look in your course. Um, 
the the assignment tool has recently been updated and uh, to make it even easier for you to grade using that tool. Um, so you can download the assignments, which is one option you have. You can download the the files that the students submit and take those offline. Um, you can use a rubric um, and you can enter that feedback there electronically. But what's really powerful is that you can use what's called inline grading. And this is a, a new feature. We've only had it uh, since uh, May of, or June, I should say, of 2013. So just about a year now. Uh, so that when an assignment is submitted, um, you can actually annotate that assignment and provide feedback and comments directly in the web browser without having to download the file offline. So here's a, a screenshot of gives you a kind of a glimpse of what this looks like. So you go in to grade the assignment and there are commenting features. Um, so you can pick and choose and you can add text comments. So just like those of you that have used the track changes feature in Word, it works similar to that. You can just click and you can add in your comments. Um, you can also annotate. So here you know you see some examples of some highlighting. Uh, you can see where there's actually written, you know, a written little star, or you know, you can circle things, highlight, uh, add those kinds of annotations, and then you can put in the comments. You can still have put in comments. You can grade with a rubric, so you can have that that same level of providing that formative feedback uh, using an interactive rubric, and it's just wonderful. A uh, course that I recently taught this past fall, I used this inline grading extensively, and it was. It was fantastic. So, um, if you've not used this inline grading feature, um, again, I'm going to point you to where we've got some resources where you can learn more about this inline grading and, and get started using it uh, yourself. Now, another uh, tool that we have in Blackboard, it's very similar to the assignments tool, and it's called Safe Assignments. And the idea with Safe Assignments is this is uh, Blackboard's plagiarism prevention tool that we have built in. So right now, you can either set up an assignment or a safe assignment. And students then submit that, uh, their work, and it basically it goes through a plagiarism check, uh, checks a variety of different web-based, uh, you know, the internet and, and Google and publicly available um, sources. But it also checks uh, a lot of the uh, databases, uh, article databases, things like, um, uh, ABI and ProQuest, um, all of those those databases there, and then it gives you an originality report. Um, Flora, great question about learning more about inline grading. I'll be sending a follow up email tomorrow, and I'll make sure that I include uh, some links for inline grading in that. So watch for that email, and I'll make sure that 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 is sent your way tomorrow. Um, my, my, my big announcement here is that there are some major enhancements coming to Safe Assign. So those of you, um, you know, Blakely, you said you love Safe Assign. There are some, some major enhancements coming. Um, what I'm going to share with you now is how it works currently and some tips for using it now. Come May, the Safe Assign tool is merging, if you will, with the assignment tool. So no longer will you have to set up a separate Safe Assignment. There will just be a little checkbox when you create any kind of an assignment in Blackboard, whether you want it to be uh, a safe assignment. You just check this box and you'll get the originality report. What it does is it, it gives you the, the same kind of uh, inline grading, like I mentioned with assignments. You'll now be able to do that with safe assignments, plus have the originality report with it. So it gives you really the best of both worlds. So um, I do use safe assign for substantial written assignments, and I let my students know um, that I have, that's my recommendation and my requirement. You can create draft versions for your students so they can submit those in advance and to check their work before they, they officially submit them. Um, and I try to allow several days for those originality reports to be created because sometimes depending on the time of the semester and the load of, of using the system, um, you know, sometimes it can take a few days to get those originality reports. And I do make them viewable by students, and that's something I recommend that you do as well, is so that the students can see those same reports um, and see maybe any issues that, that there might be there. So uh, Blakely, I noticed you said you love Safe Assign. If you have any tips, you can put those in there. Um, Doug, you asked, do I have a sense of the degree of accuracy or efficacy of the content checks? Um, Doug, I, when, the first, when the feature first came out, I, I submitted um, 
a chapter of my dissertation through it, just for kicks, because I wanted to see how this worked. And it was spot on. It did a really good job. We've submitted a variety of different kind of test um, uh, submissions through it. And um, very, very accurate, I would say, in terms of, of finding it. Not only does it find er errors and issues, but it flags those with where you can go in actual links to go to those sources. So if it's a publicly available source, you can go right there. If it's something that is, for example, in a database of uh, you know, a journal database or something, it'll it'll say that, so you'll know where that's coming from. And uh, my experience has been that it's been very very accurate. Um, so uh, let me just I'm going to check through the uh, through the text chat here. And Blakely chimed in. Um, you're right. You can. Uh, if something is kind of a false positive, you can you can choose to omit it and rerun the report. And every once in a while, you get those kinds of uh, of, of false positives. Um, uh, Ray, some professors allow students to submit a revised paper with a different angle focus added um, from another class. Safe assign would consider that as plagiarism. It would if you submit it previously. If the students have submitted that paper in a previous class uh, through SafeAssign, it gets added to NIU's internal institutional database, and then that gets checked against in the future. So as a faculty, if you want to allow students to do that, um, you, could, you simply have to be aware that it's going to check previous work that they have uh, completed. So as we're, we're running short on time, I do want to mention that we have their rubrics are fantastic, and I, like, as I promised earlier, uh, I'm going to include links in the follow-up email to some resources having to do with rubrics that I encourage you to take a look at. Blackboard.com slash rubrics is a great place to go to learn more about rubrics um, as well and to download some sample uh, Blackboard rubrics. And we have resources on our website. I'm going to zip through these really quick and I, I will include these in my follow-up uh, email. So there is, I talked about an online handout for um, today's workshop. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll be able to put this one right in the text chat. Um, so let me do that right now so that you'll have that. You can pull that up. And this is a handout that we, we try to keep, we maintain and kind of this master collection of some of these tips. So you can bookmark this. Um, encourage you if you have other tips to share those, we'll, we'll add them to this list. Um, I mentioned there are a bunch of great new features coming to Blackboard. And uh, if you head over to uh, niu.edu slash Blackboard slash upgrade, and I'm going to put this in the text chat as well, so you'll have this. Um, we just launched yesterday the, um, this site, which is our kind of our upgrade preview site, where you can go to learn more about some of these new features. And I mentioned the, that text, uh, test ex exceptions are feature, that's one of many new features coming. Um, and so you can, you can not only take a look at the features, but we do have a preview online uh, workshop like this scheduled in April over lunch hour. If you're free, you can, you can sign up for that. You can register for that. There's details there. There's about a 15-minute preview uh, recording uh, that Blackboard, someone at Blackboard had put together that we've embedded and made that available. So you can, you can get a quick glimpse at what's coming. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that. And uh, certainly register for upcoming programs that we have. You know, we do record all of these online workshops, and those are all available online. We have our Teaching with Blackboard site that you can go to. And on that site, we have, uh, if you go in the menu, if you go to Tutorials up at the top, um, you will find uh, a collection of, we're always adding to this collection of step-by-step -step tutorials on how to use the different tools here. Uh, in Blackboard. So again, I'll put all of these links in the follow-up email that you can expect to receive um, tomorrow. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, Faculty Development, if you haven't already done that, uh, to keep in touch uh, and to hear what's happening. And certainly feel free to follow up and contact me if you have uh, further questions, if you'd like to talk about any of these assessment tools, um, or if you have other tips especially those of you watching the recording. Please feel free to email those my way. I'm, I'm also pretty active on Twitter. So either way, I'd love to hear from you, and uh, you, can, you can send those tips along. So with that, I'm going to stop the recording, uh, and we'll, we'll wrap up for today.